what's left here on this special broadcast. This is an annual migration. You won't see it anywhere else in the world. It happens every year, July through to October. Two million animals, over two million of them journeying from the Serengeti National Park in Tanzania to the greener pastures of the Maasai Mara. The spectacle, of course, attracts a large number of tourists. It is, in fact, the second biggest earner of foreign exchange for Kenya. And in an exclusive interview with CCTV Africa's Beatrice Marshall, Kenya's president, Uhuru Kenyatta, explains the impact of the Maasai Mara National Reserve on the Kenyan economy and the efforts that his government is making to try and expand the tourism market. Migration is becoming a big tourist event, not just for Kenya, but uh, for international tourists as well. What does this mean to you? Well, this basically means that uh, people are beginning to appreciate the beauty that uh, Kenya is, yeah? as the cradle of mankind. Um, I think the exposure that is coming slowly as a result of our attempts to diversify our markets and to introduce Kenya to, to, to new markets like China, for example, uh, are beginning to uh, bear fruit and uh, this is something that is very exciting for us. What's been the impact of a reserve like, like the Mara for Kenya's economy? It's uh, actually very important because uh, as you know tourism is one of our biggest foreign exchange earners and this is why we've really been trying to focus to, to, to develop the, the, the tourism sector. Not just the wildlife sector and the beach which is what is uh, uh, traditionally uh, uh, known or understood but also our cultural tourism and uh, our heritage sites. Um, we've got a place like Kubifora up in Masabit in the northern part of Kenya, which uh, is renowned as the cradle of mankind where first man was, uh, was, was found. These are areas that we are now trying to develop and to see how we can attract uh, um, um, tourists to some of these areas to learn both our culture and as well as our archaeological uh, history, which is mankind's history as well. You're talking, you talk about uh, trying to find new markets for uh, Kenya's tourism. I mean, can you expound more about uh, those markets and what efforts, what measures Kenya is taking to ensure that becomes uh, comes to fruition? Well, um, traditionally, uh, you know, our main market was largely uh, uh, Western Europe and uh, uh, the United States of America. And, and while we continue to, to try and encourage uh, more growth and development in those markets, we also recognize that uh, with uh, new growing economies like China, India, Brazil, South Africa, right here on the continent, um, these are markets with huge potential who uh, would ordinarily look towards Paris and other such uh, uh, destinations. We're trying to encourage them to to see a different part uh, of, 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 of history, uh, a, a, different, a different environment, yeah? an environment that uh, maybe they previously were not very familiar with. But as we're seeing uh, over time, the more visitors we get, the, the more they begin to appreciate what, uh, what, what, what Kenya has. We're also trying to, to expand um, tourism within the region. And, and, uh, also working with our partners uh, in Uganda, in Rwanda, in Tanzania to, to, to joint sell our, our, our destination um, as, as, as a destination that really packs so much, you know, into you know, one, 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 one area. It's, it's, it's incredible when you imagine that we have, you know, snow-capped mountains, you know, savannah, desert uh, landscapes. But also, uh, looking at Kenya as well, you know, we've got our beach. We've also got huge potential to develop uh, a convention kind of tourism, where we can try and hold conferences and, and, and uh, international conventions uh, here in Kenya as well. So these are all areas that we're, we're hoping to expand on uh, going forward.